Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Orbi Wi-Fi 6 mesh system. This is the AX6000. It retails for $699, and it's been on the market for a little while, uh, so it's certainly not a brand new product, but it's something I just picked up to upgrade from the RBK50, which is the previous generation, which has served me very well. I'm hoping this will do a little bit better. Now, if you do not have any devices that support Wi-Fi 6 uh, connectivity, I don't recommend picking this up because quite frankly, you'll just be paying for future proofing. And if you don't see Wi-Fi 6 in your immediate future, you probably don't need this. So as you can see, they're saying, uh, that is Orbi, AKA Netgear, that this will accommodate up to 5,000 square feet, six plus rooms. Now, in my experience, that number is inflated. Uh, it's probably more like 3,000 square feet, at least with my home. And that be is because they are doing that measurement based on the house you see right there, which is essentially a rectangle a perfect two-story rectangle. And that is not what the majority of us live in. If you're in an apartment, that's one thing, but if you are in a freestanding home, in all likelihood, this is not going to accommodate 5,000 square feet. So I'm hoping the two satellite package will do it. If it doesn't, then I will need to add an additional satellite, which is expensive. I think they're roughly 300 US dollars. Um, and these do go on sale occasionally, but uh, you know, either way, this is still a very expensive system. Not that the previous generation that I've been using since launch isn't. So in the box, uh, you've got one Orbi router, the RBR850, and then one satellite, which is the RBS850. Let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. They do have uh, four dedicated ethernet ports on each unit. Uh, this is something that is not new. It's the same story uh, with the first generation. And that's part of the reason that I like uh, this system specifically. They're not the only of this kind in terms of, you know, you've got the Velop. There are a lot of different options out there, but I've tested most of them and the Orbi tends to do the best. And they do make a less expensive version of this for those of you that are wondering if that is what you're interested in, it's out there. So you don't have to go with this specific model. Again, the AX6000. They're telling you download the Orbi Netgear app, install it, explore. And that's because that is actually the method for getting this integrated as your home router. Now that's not the way it was back in the day when they launched their first mesh system, the one that I have been using, or even their secondary, but it is the way this is operating. And there's nothing wrong with that. So we are greeted by one satellite right here. It's a slight redesign, not a complete redesign. A little bit sleeker, a little bit more modern looking, if you will. And again, the important part, the back uh, ethernet ports that you can see right there and power button. I will get this out of the packaging so you can see it a little bit better, but we'll, we'll get there. And then this is the actual router unit, which, you know, looks exactly the same. Uh, no big whoop to do there. It's kind of to be expected. Uh, and you can see the internet port right there for actually connecting this to your own modem. By the way, if you do not have your own modem, uh, I recommend getting one. If you're renting one from your ISP, your cable service provider, uh, I highly recommend getting rid of that rental, picking up your own. They're not expensive, and the investment in the modem will pay for itself before you know it. With those two out of the way, let's see what else we have in the box. Emptiness there. And this, I assume, is just going to be some power brick action, um, as well as some Ethernet cords, and that's exactly what we've got. So, two power bricks, uh, one for each of the units. Exactly what I expected. Ethernet cable. And I think that's actually, that's the whole deal, folks. So, let's take a closer look at the actual units. I'm going to go ahead and open them up. Now, if you have a gigabit connection, you want these things in your house because that's exactly what they're going to leverage. Um, I mean, that is really the idea. I mean, the headroom is phenomenal. And if you don't have one, but you anticipate that you might in the next year or 
So then I recommend it as well because it did take, what, three years for them to actually uh, launch these. So if that's any indicator at all of how long it'll be before we see another generation of these, that means that you are safe to go ahead and upgrade to this now. Um, it's been out for, I don't know if it's a, I know it came out before the pandemic began. Unfortunately, that's become the benchmark for most things in our life, hasn't it? Um, but the idea is really simple. If you're trying to figure out whether you need a mesh system or a traditional router, I do not recommend traditional routers anymore unless you're in an apartment where you have no concerns about range. And I live to the majority of my life in apartments, so I feel you. But if you are in a house and you do have uh, a lot of connected devices like myself, you're heavily invested in uh, Hue, Nest. I mean, my entire home has Hue lighting, both indoor and out. I mean, I might have two out of, I don't know, 80 or whatever, some odd bulbs that are not uh, connected, uh, that are not Hue, and everything else is Nest. You need to have a mesh system. There's really no other way to handle this. And as I mentioned, as you can see right here with the satellite, uh, we have four dedicated ports. So if a, a certain device does require a hard wire, you've got it. And let's say you're putting a satellite in a room that's another office or a bedroom that requires uh, the bandwidth you would only get from hard wire, that's where this becomes uh, really a must have. And that's why I recommend this system to everyone that, that asks me what's the best way to cover a home doesn't have to be a really large home, but just a home, I'm always going to point at the Netgear system. Uh, I did purchase this. This is not a review unit. Uh, it may go back if performance is not what I anticipate, but I feel like it's been out long enough that it's no longer experimental. When this initially launched, I wouldn't jump on it immediately because quite frankly, my old RBK50 isn't you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Does it have issues? Sure, no system is perfect. And I'm hoping this improves upon it, especially with the firmware builds having some time to cook in the oven. Had I picked this up at launch, which again, I think was the end of 2019. I didn't go and look it up. Does it really matter at this point? I wouldn't have had complete confidence because quite frankly, this is one of those things that I know manufacturers like to push out and worry about bugs later, including Netgear. They are not perfect um, in any way, shape, or form. Let me go ahead and get that sleeve off. And so this is the main router unit where all the true action happens. Remember, they're not the same. One's a satellite, one's a router, even though they look the same. And the key difference for those of you that are novices to this mesh world you're looking at right now, which is that other than those four ports and the power port, you actually have the internet input, the ethernet port for that. By the way, all of these routers, interestingly enough, or mesh systems, do have mount points, screw holes on the bottom. Uh, so you can get creative with these. They also make outdoor units, uh, but you can see it says internet 2.5 gig, one gig, and that's because this is that next level of Wi-Fi 6 performance. Now, for those of you wondering what Wi-Fi 6 is all about, it's the bleeding edge on wireless connectivity. So if you have a brand new flagship, uh, flagship, I almost said flag, you know what, flagship, flagship smartphone, laptop, they all likely have Wi-Fi 6, unless it's an Apple product or a Microsoft product. No, I'm kidding. Uh, even those will likely have Wi-Fi 6 on board. So, uh, but if you don't have a gigabit connection in your house or really something uh, robust, you don't need Wi-Fi 6 performance. I don't want anyone to get confused and think that they need these to get better performance. You need them if you have uh, a high enough uh, form of bandwidth coming into your home that you can leverage with these. So if you have a really basic internet plan, like some people do, I know many that do, uh, you know, the least expensive plan pretty much out there. I don't know who your ISP is. Uh, you're not going to need these. You just aren't because these aren't going to give you a bigger breadth of mesh bubble to cover uh, than the previous generation. So really, again, I want to reiterate the premise, the purpose of upgrading to these Wi-Fi 6 systems like the uh, AX6000 that we're looking at here is if you actually have the internet speed 
that you need to have, or rather, that you will need Wi-Fi 6 in order to spread throughout your home. So if you're running a connection that's anywhere, let's say, less than 300 down, 20 up, you don't need this. But if your speeds are above that, especially if they are gigabit speeds, you won't be able to spread that around your house without a system like this. There are in-betweens. As I mentioned, Netgear sells a lower uh, end model than this that doesn't peak with the same amount of bandwidth. That's why it's it's not as expensive as this. I think it's 440, 450, somewhere around that is its retail price. And that system is ideal for any of you out there that are not interested in or do not already have gigabit connections in your home. But if you do, if you're already paying for that bandwidth, you better believe you should have a router or mesh router system like this so that that gigabit is spread throughout your home so that all the devices on your network can take advantage of the bandwidth you're already paying for. So I will get these set up, test them out, and I'll let you know. Hopefully they are going to outperform uh, my uh, aforementioned RBK50, the previous generation, in every single way. Uh, if not, it's not going to be the system for me this time around, and I'll just stick with the RBK50s. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.